talk about the mayoral candidates. You got six mayoral candidates. You have Janet Wilson. You got Russell Martinez. You have Jackie Macy, and you have the old guard. So a bunch of old politicians, but you got some newcomers. You have the former Oklahoma University debate instructor Jackie Macy, and he's for the homeless. So that's amazing. He's for the homeless. He actually wants to get the homeless some shelter. Isn't that weird? That's so weird. Okay, so uh, Jackie Mason, uh, Jackie Macy is in favor of the homeless. So is, I think, Russell Martinez. Now, I don't like how the Pueblo Chieftain writes any of these articles. So it's basically making it sound like this Russell Martinez hasn't been in Pueblo for his entire life. And yet, he's made electricity to Comanche Station. He's been working. Crappy, the Pueblo Chieftain is. This should be a moment for the pulp or for somebody else to stand up. They're not a good daily. They're not a good paper of record. They are a corporatist, capitalist, money-making machine. They don't give a shit if you know the information that you need to know. So Russell Martinez, they're shitting on Russell Martinez. Why are they shitting? They basically, they say he's a fruit of transplant. Well, that means he's a local Coloradan. He was living in Mesa County, which is the same county that has Grand Junction. So on the west side of Colorado, 10 years ago, 10 years ago, actually 11 years ago, he moved to Pueblo from Fruta, Fruta, Mesa County, Colorado, to help build the third unit at the Comanche Station. And I think the Comanche Station is making electricity. So he's been here. Uh, he's a boilermaker. He's a boilermaker. He's a union man. He's pro-labor. He's making the electricity. And yet, what, Peter Roper or whoever wrote this damn... Comanche Generating Station is part of Excel Energy. Excel Energy has got a Comanche station, and they say it's an active member of the Pueblo community, providing public tours for community groups, hosting open houses for local residents, and they also work with the El Pueblo Boys and Girls Ranch. So I don't know if they're a bit blamed for all the child abuse. They still have that, you know, up as if they're bragging about it. But they're two of the three coal-burning units at the Comanche Generating Station in Pueblo. So they're going away from coal and to a different way. So that's the Comanche Station. So he's uh, Russell Martinez did come from Fruta 11 years ago, but for 11 years, he's been constructing our uh, electricity. He's been a citizen here. He's been living and working and eating. This is his home. But according to the Pueblo Chieftain, this is the candidate they want to win. They want probably one of the old guard, right? Your Nicks and your Steves and your Lorries. And they hate the homeless. They hate Martinez is a boiler maker by trade. He's been for the past 18 years a boiler maker. He works out of the Boiler Makers Lodge 101. He's a union man. A union man in a day and age when unions have gone down. So we still have somebody who gives a goddamn about the working men and women. The working class. The homeless and the poor are being forgotten. The working man is right around the corner. That's just three class levels up. Working man don't stand a chance. Working man don't stand a chance. So he is a Puebloan. He's been a Puebloan. He's an American. He's been a Puebloan for the last 10 years. You have the chieftain acting like he's not. So they're great propagandists. Peter Roper is a great globalist. Russell Martinez is 46 years old. He's the fifth candidate to file, file paperwork to run for the office of mayor. The They're trying to get their... build the third unit at the Comanche station in 2007. And then he also helped build the airport generation station by the Pueblo Memorial Airport. So he's helping build electricity for the Pueblo people. He's building electricity for our airport. He's a boilermaker. He's pro-labor. He cares about the homeless. He says he wants to implement some work programs for the homeless people. We need to actually, someone needs to stand up and just take the licks. They try to get a homeless shelter in Lake Street. They try to get a homeless shelter some other place, rich fucking bill. And all these rich assholes keep going to the city council and protesting, not in my backyard, don't want this shit in my backyard. So what's going to happen? Well, they just swept up a bunch of homeless. Lori Winter, baby Hitler is going around uh, terrorizing the shit out of the most vulnerable. 
Whatever you do the least of my brethren, you do unto me, says Jesus Christ. But there aren't any Christians around. For God so loved the world that he gave his only son, so that everyone who believes in him might not perish, but might have eternal life. John 3.16. Russell Martinez is going to look out for the homeless people. He's pro-labor, pro-working class. He is going to work on bringing down the cost of assisted living down and expand activities and transportation on the weekends. He also said, and he wants to bring new vitality to an already rich historic city. So he has some ideas, and he wants to help. And he also wants to show some leadership, not just for his daughter to get involved, but for other young people. So he's for the young people. He's for the old people. He's expanding activities for transportation. He wants bus services on the weekend. Well, that's exactly what Janet Wilson had said. It almost seems as if Janet Wilson, because she has a platform, is leading this discussion. What is the old guard going to do? Well, we know baby Hitler is going to try to wipe out all the poor and the working class and the homeless and probably even the uh, lower middle class. The baby Hitler only cares about the 1% and the bankers. She I'm going to tell God how you treat me. I'm going to tell God how you treat me. Now, this was the sin of your sister Sodom. As in, in Sodom and Gomorrah. The problem with Sodom was that she and her daughters were arrogant, overfed, and unconcerned. They did not help the poor and the needy. Ezekiel 16:49. The Martinez. That's Russell Martinez, okay? So Russell Martinez, Steve Noraki, Nick Gardasar, Jackie Macy, Janet Wilson, and baby Hitler. Now, Lori Weiner, Lori Weiner is saying, let them eat cake. That's her solution, just like Marie Antoinette. What can the poor and the working class do? Well, if you lose your job, everybody uh, that is working class is only two weeks to one month away from homelessness. So if you lose your job, if you get fired for no cause whatsoever at your at-will employment, if you get fired, if you have an operation that costs thousands of dollars put you in bankruptcy and now you've lost your home and you're living in your car, Lori Winter will guarantee you she will wipe you out. She will make sure you get the fuck out of here. Yeah, you lost your job, you had to get an operation, fuck your life. She's not talking about health care, she's not talking about Wi-Fi, she's not talking about helping anybody because that would take love and compassion. All she has is hatred. What good is it, my brothers, if someone says he has faith but does not have works? Can that faith save him? If a brother or sister has nothing to wear, has nothing to eat for the day, and one of you says to them, go in peace, be warmed and filled, without giving them the things needed for their body, what good is that? West has all the rich people over there, right? All the rich people, no homeless, no poor people in Pueblo West. So they're going to give the city of Pueblo all the mental cases, all the drug cases, all the homeless cases, all the poor people, and then they're just going to have a bunch of middle, upper middle class one percenters over there. We're an actual city. We're always going to have these issues. So that's why we need the political will in order to actually do something about it. But Lori Winter is a fascist, you know, to clean the roads and to clean the yards. Okay, it's got good intentions, but that's the Bacasi Fisherman Massacre. The Bacasi Fisherman Massacre killed a whole bunch of the poor fishermen, because they didn't pay a boat tax in three days. You know, they put the post up on the post, said you better pay your boat taxes, because that's how they tax the fishermen. If you got a boat, then you got an engine, they tax the engine. Bakasi fishermen over oil in Africa. And you don't know shit about it, even though the American government is very much... So, also, faith of itself, if it does not have works, is dead. James 2, 14-17 rank all these candidates, first would be Janet Wilson. Janet Wilson absolutely is, you know, because she's an activist, Janet Wilson is running Pueblo House. Janet Wilson is getting volunteers to help the community out. Janet Wilson has a program for the youth. She's actually doing something in, in this community. She's not a Peter Roper. She's not the Pueblo chieftain just bitching and bullshitting and not helping anybody what's the goddamn ever. She's actually putting in the work, putting in the elbow grease, and uh, making this community a better thing. She is showing that actions. Faith is nothing unless there's some actions, and Janet Wilson is a woman of action. 
So if I'm going to rank them, because ranked choice voting is the only fair way to do it. Of course, Gardas, Gratisar, he don't want ranked choice voting because he's against the independents, against the libertarians, against the greens. He doesn't give a goddamn about a fair election. That's not what Gratisar is about. He's going to take this fucking thing by bullying. He's going to take it. So because you are lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. For you say I am rich and affluent and have no need of anything, not realizing that you are wretched and pitiful and poor and blind and naked. That's Revelation chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. Divorce deposition in 1990. You had Ivana Trump who accused her soon-to-be ex-husband, Donald Trump of raping her in a fit of rage the previous year. So this had been in 1989. She said that her husband raped her after a doctor that she had recommended gave him an unexpected painful scalp reduction operation to eliminate a bald spot. So he wanted to get rid of a bald spot. She had a doctor. Hey, why don't you try my doctor? And then it's real painful. He's all pissed off and he says, this shit hurts, right? And then she's not listening. So then he just starts pulling out Ivanka or Ivana, not Ivanka, that's the daughter. Ivana is the mother of his three kids and just starts yanking out fists full of her hair and then holding her hands back, tearing out her clothes, and then he jams her dick inside of her. There's penetration. And then the first time they had sex for a year and a half, for 16 months. Here's Acts chapter 20, verse 35. In all things I have shown you that by working hard in this way, we must help the weak. And remember the words of the Lord Jesus Christ, how he himself said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. That are confused about ranked choice voting, well, I'll make it very simple. There's six candidates that's running for mayor right now, and the people have until August in order to jump in, and then you've got to get 100 signatures. So announcing your campaign right now allows you to talk about it and to put your ideas. But this is going to be a long campaign, right? Already starting out in the beginning of the year, going to campaign. It's going to be partisan. Everybody knows this, these local Democrats are the ones that run everything. Everybody knows who the Republican, who the Democrat is. So to make it sound like it's totally nonpartisan, bullshit, get the fuck out of here. So Steve Noraki was bullied by Nick Gratisar. Nick Gratisar's got this huge head, and he gets in to the city council, and he says, hey, I want a mayor, and then everybody got, you know, real scared and just bowed down to him. Steve bowed down, Lori bowed down, and they did it because of their own ambitions. They wanted the power. They love the power. They can't get enough of the power, and they want more power, more wealth. Winner will definitely attack you if you're living in your car, you're living in a ditch, if you have no hope whatsoever. In fact, if you're homeless, she'll look at the nice blanket that you got. She's got apartments on top of apartments. She's never been homeless. She's never stared poverty in the face. What the hell does she know about the struggle? The struggle is hard for everybody. So you're going to make it worse on others? So the jail is there. You're going to put all that money in the jail. That's how they're going to get their shelter. The person is homeless. You don't do a fucking thing because you're not Christians and you're not good people. So there's homeless people on the street. And what, you're going to let the fascists, what, you know, kick their fucking teeth in. But what they need is some shelter. What they need is some shelter. And if they don't get some shelter, they're going to find some shelter. There's 22 empty houses all over the place. If you're homeless, I give you permission. Go live in that house. Don't let society fucking kill you because of their, uh, their absolute fucking psychoticness because they're so callous and they can't give a goddamn about anybody else. Here's a section from Luke chapter 6, verses 20 to 26, the Sermon on the Plain. And raising his eyes toward his disciples, Jesus Christ said, Blessed are you who are poor, for the kingdom of God is yours. Blessed are you who are poor. For the kingdom of God is yours. The objective is that every inch of Pueblo City should be used for a social purpose. You got an old ass building just sitting there, dilapidated, falling apart, inviting, you know, the transients and the druggies into the house. Is that good for anybody? Because you can't condemn them because you, got, you pretend your, your uh, hands are tied? You have broad condemnation powers. You have broad. Are you listening, Pueblo City Council? Broad condemnation power. So. 
you have the jail. You got the jail option. You got 22 empty houses. You got a lot of empty buildings. If you're homeless, do what it takes to get some housing because none of these fuckers around here are going to give a goddamn, and they probably will. Don't even talk to them. Don't even talk to them at all because if they know something about you, like where you're living out in the woods, they'll fuck up your little, you know, you got a nice cover, but you don't have any permanent residency, but you're living high on the hog, right? Great fat, you know, great facts in there. So she's against poor people, working class people. She's against... Blessed are you who are now hungry, for you will be satisfied. Blessed are you who are now weeping, for you will laugh. Blessed are you when people hate you and when they exclude and insult and denounce your name as evil on the account of the Son of Man. Rejoice and leap for joy on that. Behold, your reward will be great in heaven, for their ancestors treated the prophets in the same way. But woe! To you who are rich, for you have received your consolation. But woe to you who are filled now, for you will be hungry. Woe to you who laugh now, for you will grieve and weep. Woe to you when I speak. Be Hitler, let them eat cake. That's what Lori Weiner is saying. Let them all eat cake. What can the poor and the homeless do? Let them eat cake. While you're getting, you know, kicked in the teeth by jackbooted thugs. So Lori Weiner, a.k.a. Baby Hitler, she wants to, she's a fascist, so she wants to regulate the shit out of your life. She wants to make sure that your fence line is exactly five feet. She wants to make sure that you, you know, are doing exactly everything she wants. Make sure the driveways are gated. Make sure you have gated. Make sure you got fence lines. Make sure that all the uncollected property liens, so throughout the years, whenever they said, hey, your weeds are growing too tall, they'll put a lien on your property, and then you have to pay that property. Even if you sell that property to somebody else, they still hold on to that lien. And so they put nearly a million dollars in uncollected property liens onto the property owner's tax bills for timely collection. So she's a great tax collector, right? Making sure to get the liens from the previous owner, jacking up the bills. A guy named David at this meeting, and he was just sitting there saying how much he hated the homeless, and we don't want to encourage these kinds of people. I don't want the Davids of the world, the people that don't give a shit about others. I'm tired of you psychopaths that don't give a flying fuck. You call yourself Christian, and then you sit there and shit on the poor. As if, you know, I mean, because they're poor and homeless, so rich people living out in Pueblo West, right, they can ignore the poverty and the homelessness. So I feel like that's where we should be shipping our homeless, into the rich people's neighborhoods, or we should be taxing them. You know, I'm like a Robin Hood. You're goddamn right I stand up for the 99%. These motherfuckers, Lori Winter only cares about the 1%. She don't give a shit about the majority of Pueblo. And then think about this, Athens had Attica surrounding it. You go out into the county, you got flat land upon flat land that just goes on and on. What social purpose does, you know, thousands of acres just sitting there do for anybody? That could be a, per where, a place where the homeless could live if we care. Nick Gratisar, the big bully who pushed his uh, fellow Democrat friends, you got to, you know, watch out for your friends. They can become more tyrannical than your enemies. And he uh, basically stared st Steve Noraki down, made him vote for this thing which was illegal. None of these assholes know the Constitution. They have no constitutional authority for any of what they're doing. If you're not in favor of a charter convention, that's going to be my litmus test for the mayor. You don't believe in America. You don't believe in the constitutional government, constitutional law. You don't believe in home rule government. You don't love Pueblo. The city of Pueblo is a home rule city, and the mayor is uh, stripping that status away. They are ripping our charter away. So they are a bunch of state people. He says he can't wait to, you know, uh, be the state guy. Well, I want somebody who's a Pueblo guy, who gives a shit about the people that live here in Pueblo. 45% are in poverty. 45%. Gratisar, he's been in government. Uh, no Rocky, Nori Winter, they don't give a shit. They've been... Wilson is from Canada. She's, she's just like that Russell Martinez. She's been living here for nearly a decade, but not a Pueblo, you know, not Puebloan enough. Yeah, what the people here in Pueblo, the elite... The Democratic Central Committee, what they're doing is they're making all the good young progressive leave. Get the hell out of here. They don't want anybody else in their government. They got it to where they want it. They don't want any, they don't believe in democracy. Gardasar is against ranked choice voting. So that means he doesn't give a shit if the military veterans get the vote. He says he's going to use ranked choice for the military. So he's doing this dual thing. So if he's going to use ranked choice for the veterans, then that means it's better because you get several runoff elections in one. So that's his compromise because he can't let go that he wants a French-style runoff. Hey, Nick Gardasar, why don't you go to France? You want a runoff election? Go to France. In this country, instant runoff voting is the fair way for a...
she's from Canada, the fact that she's actually doing something in the community. Janet Wilson is a badass. And if you all cannot see that, because you guys are a bunch of fucking Hillary Democrats. You guys are right-wing, corporatist, warmonging sons of bitches, racist sons of bitches. She's from Canada. That means she understands what it's like to be in a community that cares about each other's health. Oh, you have a health problem? We'll go to the hospital, and we as a community will pay for it because we want everybody to have a good life. Meanwhile, you got the Mike Pence's of the world that says, no, nah, no, nah, let's just do some backwards-ass thing. Meanwhile, STDs spread all over the place. H3N2 is supposed to kill 300 million. They've been killing a shit ton way more this year than any other year. And that's because we don't have universal health care, single-payer universal health care, and paid sick leave. Now, how come the Democrats and the Republicans don't give a shit about this? So Janet Wilson knows what it's like to be in a community that actually gives a shit about others. Platforms. What is Nick Gardasar, Gratisar, and uh, Steve Noraki, Lori Winter, what are they going to do that they hadn't already done when they was in power? You already had power. You want to change? You want to do something? You could have done it, but you did it. So get the fuck out of here. You didn't give a shit about the poor. You didn't give a shit about the homeless. You don't give a shit about us, the working class. You don't give a shit about the 99%. You're not a progressive. You don't want to move forward. And how can you not be a progressive? To grow, to advance, to move forward. Well, you want to, uh, to stunt people's growth? You want to go backwards? You don't want to go forward? Growing, increasing, getting better. I love it or leave it, fuck you. I clean my house because I love my house. It would be in crazy, yeah, I just go, just love my kitchen as is. Okay, I could love my kitchen as is, but I need to do the dishes too. So I'm going to change it, I'm going to make it better, and that's how fucking life works. Love it or leave it, yeah, imagine that. Love it or leave it. Uh, dirty ass kitchen, uh, I'm going to talk about Janet Wilson's uh, platform. Janet Wilson's platform, she's talking about the jail issue, she's talking about the justice system, she's talking about bus service. And some of the other candidates are already uh, jumping on her bus service. She's talking about getting recycling here. The two ladies from Pueblo First said they have to drive all the way to Colorado Springs for, to drop off the recyclables. If we had capital, if we had money, you could start a recycling plant. And you could buy all that stuff. All these trash companies compete, and they don't even pick up all the damn trash. So recreation centers. She also, music and art, small businesses. She wants to care about the veterans. So this is, you know, this is who Janet Wilson is. I'm going to get into it a little bit more. But she's got a platform. She's wrote it down. We know what we're going to get with the Janet Wilson. What are we going to get with the Nick Gratisar? You know, you could basically put dog shit on a piece of toast, and that's a better platform than Gratisar. And then potato salad for everybody. Nick, uh, Steve Noraki wants, wants to do an analysis of the jail to see how many homeless people were thrown into jail. That's what we do around here. There's no Christians. All they're doing is beating the shit out of them, putting the boot in their teeth, and then there's some homeless that need a shelter, so they'll just break the law so they can get some shelter. They'll get some shelter either by breaking into your all those old, dilapidated, blighted houses or the blighted buildings or finding some ditch or culvert or breaking a menial law so they can get that jail food. Many nonviolent offenders, many homeless, many people who are in jail right now who belong in the mental ward, who belong in rehab, who have mental issues. They're not criminals. You're going to put crazies in with the vicious, violent, con air criminals. So she's also in favor of more of the lion's share going to rehab and a couple million to clean up the jail. She wants, to, we need to start loving each other, right? Jesus said love. The jail gets the scraps, but the rehab gets the lion's share. Of if someone who has worldly means, if somebody who is rich sees a brother in need and refuses him compassion, how can the love of God remain in him? How can it be said that he loves God? He does not love God. Those who refuse a brother or sister in need does not love God. Children, let us love not in word or speech, but in truth and deed confidence before God. Now, this is how we all, we shall know that we belong to the truth and reassure our hearts before him and whatever our hearts condemn for God is greater than our hearts and knows everything. Beloved, if our hearts do not condemn us, we have confidence in God and receive from him whatever we ask because we keep his commandments and do what pleases him. And his commandment is this, we should believe in the name of his son, Jesus the Christ in love. One another, just as he commanded us, those who keep this, those who keep his, fuck, those who keep his commandments remain in him, and he in them, and the way we know that he remains in us is from the spirit that he gave us.
Steve Noraki, he was the president of the city council for eight years. For eight years, he maintained the poverty. He made sure he didn't give a goddamn about the poor people, didn't provide jobs for the working class. Petco is a big-ass failure, and then he didn't give a shit about the homeless for eight fucking years. We haven't had a shelter for eight fucking years. So Steve Noraki actually is the, you know, the catalyst to not give a shit about the homeless. Nick Gratisar, he's been a water board member, right? Oh, he's been in the water board, so now he's going to take over the reins of government. He doesn't even understand constitutional law. I can't even believe that he's got a law degree. How did he get a law degree? How did he pass the bar? He don't even understand the Constitution. So the accountability, transparency, Janet Wilson is for a lot of good things. No Rocky is for, you know, potato salad for everybody. Well, how's he going to pay for the potato salad? How's he going to pay for the potato, potato salad? What if they don't like potato salad? And even though that's not true, he's not for potato salad. Potato salad thing is more substantial than the platform they're already offering. Already offering, they're offering nothing. So when you think of the Noraki platform, think of a bunch of potato salad that doesn't make any goddamn sense. We don't have the money for it. Not everybody likes potato salad, but that's what Steve Noraki is promising us because he ain't promising us jack shit. And Gratisar, he's gonna put dog shit on a piece of toast and then rub it into your mom's face. So what the hell, Gratisar? How's that going to help anybody? The only time Gratisar talks is to cover up the truth. He's a bullshitter. He's a liar. He's not forthcoming with information. He's not telling us the information that we need to live and survive in this city. Pueblo City, okay? This is for the people of Pueblo. And you just, what, 18%? That's not the majority. 65% of the people of Pueblo, they don't even represent themselves. How the fuck is anybody else going to give a shit about Pueblo unless the 65% who don't vote... Start the vote. Come on, Pueblo. We got Janet Wilson seems to think that the culture here is there's a, she don't want to say corrupt, but she does say that they're against good ideas. If they, somebody presents a good idea, but it didn't come out of the mouth of Gratisar, I guess you got to pretend like he thought of it, right? You got to say, well, what about this? And then he's like, oh my God, brilliant idea. And then make it seem like it was his idea. That's the only, they hate good ideas. How the fuck can you hate good ideas? How are we going to progress if we're going to throw good ideas away? Let's grow. Let's advance. Let's move forward. Let's progress. So she's for accountability. She's for transparency. She's for efficiency of city department. She wants to identify the redundant and overlapping areas. So let's save some money. We got 16 departments in the city. And, I, you know, I, I wish there was somebody that I could say, you know what? That person who works in the city, they got my back. Yeah, right. Go to the city hall. They're like, God, who the hell is this asshole now, right? And it's like, fuck, why did I even drive all the way out of here? Did I shave my legs for this? Code of ethics passed for the city council. So the, I wish she would talk more about the charter. She said she was opposed to the mayor idea, so that's also good. Those who are opposed to the mayor idea, I trust those people more than those who are like, hey, I'm an ambitious asshole and I want to take all the power and money away from everybody. Fuck you. Fuck you, ambitious, fucking selfish, greedy sons of bitches. You don't have a fucking platform because you're not going to promise anything to us, and you're going to be a tyrant. You're going to do as the fuck as you please. I went to the Women's League of Voter thing, and they said, well, they get to unveil their platforms. A lot of candidates had no platforms whatsoever. So the women of the women of the League of Women Voters are better candidates, better, more knowledgeable, intelligent than the candidates that we have. So maybe they should start running for office. She's for bus service after 6 p.m. and on Sundays. People got to go places on Sunday. People got to go places after 6 p.m. And the rich man is to glory in his humiliation because like flower and grass, he too will pass away. For the sun rises with its scorching heat and withers the grass, its flower falls and its beauty perishes. So also will the rich man fade away in the midst of his pursuit. James 1, 10 to 11. What good is it, my brother? Gonna identify overreaching government rules. So she's cutting regulations, which is libertarian. She very much feels like a left libertarian. She cares about the poor. She cares about the working class. And she wants government to get off our backs. Let us develop our own businesses. Quit stopping people from doing good ideas. Just because you ain't going to get your hands Greece, you're not going to get your palms greased. You're not going to let other people with good ideas do their thing. People either need jobs or they need to start their own businesses. And if you're not helping people get jobs or start their own business, get the fuck out of here. We don't need you. 
This is a capitalist society. We need jobs and start our own business in order to eat so we can live. So she's going to identify the boards and the commissions that are working. She's going to cut out all the regulations. She's going to be for bus service. That same David guy goes, hey, wait a second. How are you going to get the money for that? Because when it comes to helping people, then the price all of a sudden matters. But David was for the jail, hurting people. When it comes to more jails, more cops, more fascism, they have no all expenses paid. The price, how much was that jail? $300 billion? Hey, let's have a $300 fucking billion dollar jail. And then what? Just It doesn't matter where the fuck the money comes from. Let's just borrow it upon our grandchildren and of our grandchildren. Let's just borrow it off from future generations. So when it comes to jails and hurting people, these Republicans couldn't wait to spend $300 billion. You know what they could never do? Spend a fucking dime that actually helps people because they can't give a shit. They cannot give a shit. They have no compassion. They're criminalizing the homeless, so they're forcing them to go to jail, getting them a record. How the fuck does that help anybody? That's the only services they're willing to pay for is fascist boots and people's teeth, but rehab, cheap shelter for the poor, universal health care, psychotic Republicans don't give a shit about you and me. This is also for public forums. She's for listening to people. Janet Wilson is for recreation centers for the youth. Somebody said, we already tried that bullshit. Hurley, we already tried. No, we didn't. Shut the fuck up. There are no fucking recreation centers around here. There's none for the youth, none for the adults. And that's good, having a gymnasium for adults. What the hell are the adults doing? Beating up their kids? That's all they care about. These Republicans only care about child abuse and uh, hurting the homeless, right? They hurt their kids. They hurt the homeless. They just hurt anybody. They have no love in their heart. She wants to support entrepreneurs and small business. Janet Wilson wants more technology in this city. She wants to start neighborhood associations. She wants to create think tanks. She wants to do stuff for the disabled and the veterans. She wants to address the homeless issues. She wants to address the mental health solutions. Look at the jail, review the justice system. She said something about bringing a Swiss company in here to bring some renewable energy here. She touts her banking and financial. I rank choice voting. Nick Gardasar is going to be last on my list every time because he doesn't believe in a fair election. You want a fair election that's fair for the independents? Give independents a chance. And then it also makes sure that we have a majority winner. And it also makes sure that we respect each other's candidates. So if I want to vote for my favorite candidate and you don't think they have a chance, then my second vote could go for your candidate. So therefore, you need to be nice to me if you want to win my vote over. But they don't want to do that. They want the partisan bickery. They want the bullshit. They want unfair elections. And if we don't have fair elections, fuck, we, nothing else matters. I mean, if you don't have a fair mechanism in order to choose your leadership. So number one is Janet Wilson. Number two is Russell Martinez. Number three is Jackie Macy. Number four, Steve Noraki. Number five, Lori Weiner. And then number six, Gratisar. Gratisar is last. No way. I'm not voting became a citizen in 2007, so she's been an American for over a decade. She got naturalized, which actually means she probably understands our basic form of government, the three branches, the rule of law, better than most Americans do. And she's been here for 11 years. If 11 years doesn't mean something, it's such bullshit. People are such fucking pricks, right? So a bunch of old uh, crusty curmudgeon, you know, the old guard, the old elite, they're, you know, they're living on Social Security. They don't have to worry about poverty. They're getting a fat fucking check from the working class. Why do they have to give a shit about anybody else? So she's part of the Occupy. She said in 2011 she got on the Occupy movement. She's got a precious Jill Stein quality to her, a precious revolutionary. She wrote a book called Movement. She visited 160 cities during Occupy. Now, today, here, she's got three houses that was donated and renovated. She's running Pueblo House, a school for the... So, from the first letter of John, we get the overall commandment, the one cat commandment that wraps all the other commandments up. So, from the first letter of John, this is chapter 3, verse 11 to 24. For this is the message you have heard from the beginning. We should love one another, unlike Cain, who belonged to the evil one and slaughtered his brother. Also, Petco, in order to become part of Petco, you need a $1,000 membership fee. Well, our, tax pay, our taxes are going to Petco, but only the rich people can go to fucking Petco. Who's got $1,000? These assholes got $1,000 to join a rich people's club, but they don't have $1,000 to build some cheap-ass dilapidated fucking shack for somebody who needs it. 
These sick motherfuckers. You know what we need to have? We need to have a homeless shelter that grows marijuana. Let's have a homeless shelter that has a grow. They can grow the weed. They can sell it in retail. Let the city do this. And then they'll be doing something good, something that they like. They'll be offering a service. They'll be able to pay for themselves. And then we could have banks that tie to the Pueblo dollar. Pueblo Kush tie it to one ounce of the Pueblo dollar. So for every dollar, you could get an ounce or five dollars or what have you. We'll move the world because that's sound money. We're not on the gold or silver standard anymore. So let's tie the Pueblo dollar to the Pueblo Kush. Why did Cain slaughter Abel? Because his own works were evil and those of his brother righteous. Do not be amazed then, brothers, if the world hates you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. Whoever does not love remains in death. Everyone who hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life remaining in him. The way we came to know love was that he laid down his life for us, so we ought to lay down our lives for our brothers. If someone who has worldly means sees a brother in need and refuses him compassion, how can we love? How can the love of God remain in him? Happening until the thousand kids in Pueblo have a fighting chance. You're going to tell me what they choose to do, they want to live. Shut the fuck up. Nobody chooses that shit. It may, very few, very few, you know, bohemian hippies, 1% of them. But if they had an opportunity to live in a house or live in a fucking ditch, so this is what the chieftain, this is what the Democrats and the Republicans of Pueblo, they want to sit there and say, well, she's only been in America for 11 years. That's enough to see that you haven't done goddamn thing about the poverty. 45% of the people are poor in Pueblo. 25% of the children are poor. 1,000 kids are homeless. 1,000 kids. You don't think those kids deserve a place to live? You don't think they deserve shelter? You're going to blame the parents and blame this and blame everything else. Some of them assholes were talking about change the population, like some sort of population cleansing. So, and then also zero grant writers. We don't have any grant writers. That should be uh, the first thing. Get all those grants that to know about, you know, baby Hitler, about Lori Weiner. She's allowed to run for two offices. She's running for county commissioner and she's running for mayor. Is that legal? Are you allowed to run for several offices? And, I mean, I'm going to guess she just does whatever she wants and they just, you know, let her do it. But the, she's not inspiring and she's very much a fascist. So she's going to destroy Pueblo. There's no, I, I hope she don't have a chance, but I bet you she will represent some evil, psychotic constituency, right? Nobody puts baby Hitler in the corner. No, that's where she needs to be. Baby Hitler needs to be in the corner. But this mayoral insanity is already starting one year out already. Instead of waiting until August like we did last year, campaign for just two months, so just two months of politics, now the ambitions of many have been unleashed for 11 months and nine more months to the politicking and nonpartisan. Get the fuck out of here. This is 100,000 people living in this town. So everybody knows who the Democrats, who the Republicans, who are in or Gardasar, that'd be the last person that I'm going to talk about. But this goes for Loy Winner, Nick Gratisar, and Steve Noraki. They don't understand the three branches of government. That's a cornerstone to American politics. They don't understand the rule of law because they operate above the law. They don't have to listen to anybody. They, they, you know, actually, they don't get fascist power. Cops can arrest every single one of these politicians. Cops can arrest the judge. And cops can arrest the executive. Cops can arrest the city council. City council isn't going to hold you all accountable, then you all hold them accountable. You know, they don't want to make sure people are good or evil, right? Anybody can be good or evil, but they're going to assume once you get power, then you're just good. And when you get power, you're good. Because, yeah, power always means uh, you're, you know, absolute power corrupts absolutely. Of course it does. Absolutely it does. There's a coffee cop in a coffee shop in Cali that's banning cops from coming in. You know, I, you know, that makes sense. They say that there's psychological. Come now, you rich, weep and howl for your miseries which are coming upon you. James, chapter 5, verse 1 to 4. James, chapter 2, verse 6. But you have dishonored the poor man. Is it not the rich who oppress you and personally drag you into court? James 2, 6. Don't take advantage of the poor just because you can. Don't take advantage of those who stand helpless in court. The Lord will argue their case for them and threaten the life of anyone who threatens theirs. If you want to run for mayor, just go ahead and declare it, and you can talk about it up until August. All you need is 100 signatures in August, and then you can run for mayor. Anybody and everybody can run for mayor. So these six are starting it out, but it's going to change. We'll see it. And uh, Gardasar, he says he's going to quit from his private law practice. If he's elected mayor, he's going to quit his job. 
He's an elected. Uh, he's part of the Pueblo Board of Waterworks. He says he's going to quit the waterworks. He's going to quit his private law practice. But that's the people that Gardasar represents, those who give him fucking money. If you got thousands of dollars to throw at Gardasar for some DUI case, then Gardasar, Gardasar is going to give a shit about you. But if you're poor, you're working class, you're homeless, he's very much for the Lori Wiener's uh, jackbooted fascist baby Hitler, you know, just put the jackbooted thugs into the homeless people's teeth. They don't have any money. They can't get him, uh, secure him for legal representation. Gratisar don't give a shit about the poor. Proverbs 22, 22 to 23. Come now, you rich. Weep in hell for the miseries that are coming upon you. Your riches have rotted and your garments are moth-eaten. Your gold and silver have corroded and their corrosion will be evidence against you and will eat your flesh like fire. You have laid up treasure in the last days. Behold, the wages of the laborers who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you, and the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. You have lived on earth in luxury and in self-indulgence. You have fattened your hearts in a day of slaughter. James chapter 5, verse 1 through 6. For it is easier for a camel to go through the eye of a needle than for a rich person to enter the kingdom of God. Luke 18, 25. Uh, Gratisar, he's got, you know, just dog shit on a piece of toast. That's his platform. He's going to, he bullied Noel Rocky. He bullied Lori Winter to put this illegal ballot measure on the ballot. And he's saying that he's going to retire, but he's already, you know, he's already corrupt because he only gets, he only does work for those who pay him. So he only cares about the money. He made a point, something about um, people said during the mayor campaign they wish the city ran as well as the water board does. So the water board is so good. Even though I like my water, I'm, it does have a little funny taste. So I want actually my water to be checked. Is he actually good with the water board? You got five members for the last 20 years. You only had one person running for water board. So to say, act like what? He's just overwhelmingly popular. Yeah, right. What, the majority of the 30%, so 16% of people, and he's the only person running. 16% of the people voted for him. The other ones didn't even want the guy, so they voted for none of the above. Woe to you and all speak well of you, for their ancestors treated the false prophets in this way. Quoting him because they got nothing else to say. They keep talking about how the new mayor is going to be paid $150,000 a year. The city manager was paid 165000 So you want a strong executive? You already had a strong executive, you stupid fuckers. And then and they got paid 165000 They got more money. So actually, the mayor is a demotion. The, de mayor, the mayor gets less money than Sam Azad gets today. So he says the most important thing he's going to do is represent the city and deal with the state. He's going to bully. He bullied this criminal mayor referendum in. He's going to bully his way onto the scene without a plan, without a platform, just bullying. He's going to be like Trump, just bullying the shit out of everybody, right? I actually like Steve Noraki a little bit better. Noraki, that's Polish, right? And the Nietzsche said that the strength of the German people comes from their Polish blood. So, you know, I don't like that fucking stereotypical bullshit. I think it's a good thing that he's Polish. What the fuck is a Gardasar? What's he going to do? So he's going to be like, hey, I'm going to go to Denver and I'm going to get this money. <laughs> I'm sure. He's going to use his clout. He, he's a rich and power man. He only gets the shit about the power. He has no plan, no platform. He's not offering us. Even uh, Jason Muniz offered us Wi-Fi. Are we even going to get some fucking Wi-Fi? No, Rocky didn't get us Wi-Fi for the last 10 years. Lori Wiener didn't get us Wi-Fi for the last two years. And what the hell, only two years? How come she don't, you know, wants to be humble? She ain't humble. So then they asked, what about the severe staff shortage at the Colorado Mental Health Institute? And he's like, well, you know, it, what is happening at CMHIP, CHIMP? That means it's a crime, and a lot of jobs are in this city, and we can't let it to wither away. We can't afford to let, so he's going to fight for the job. So that's, that's the only two things I know he wants. He wants to go to Denver, represent Pueblo there, and he wants to make sure the Colorado Mental Health Institute at Pueblo doesn't get closed down. He thinks it's a crime. It's Gratisar, Tetcher, Rippinger, and Roth, that's his law firm. They're at 1836 Vinewood Lane, number 200. I guess they're renting a place. They can't even own the building. Pueblo, Colorado, 81005 hours. They open from 8 a.m. Monday. So the phone is 719-566-8844.
and then GTRRLAW.com. So he's born in Pueblo, Colorado, August 1st, 1949. So that would have actually have been six years after he was born. They made this constitution. They wrote up this charter that he is pissing and shitting on. He is shitting on the greatest generation because clearly Gratisar is so much smarter than all the former founding fathers of Pueblo. He's against charter conventions because he doesn't want the people to be to participate. He's also against constitutional government. He's against the three branches of government. He's against the rule of law. The Colorado and U.S. District Court, District of Colorado Bar, 1977, U.S. Court and Appeals, 10th Circuit, 1985, Bachelor of Science, Southern Colorado State College, 1971, J.D. with honors, Drake University, 1976, Public Col uh, County Bar Association, an outstanding young lawyer, 1986, member of staff, Drake Law Review, 1975-1976, clerkship for Judge or Oral Kelly. He's been a lawyer, so lawyers are known to lie. And he's had a comfortable fucking life. Look at all these people. He's just been frat fraternizing with the elite and the 1% and all these bankers and these, you know. So uh, Judge Aura R.L. Kelly, Colorado Court of Appeals, uh, 77 to 78, Colorado County Public Trustee, 87 to 99, in 2007 to 2012, member of Pueblo County, uh, Colorado American Bar Associations, Colorado Trial Lawyers, something, lawyer this, lawyer that, fuck. He's been a member thing Gratisar had said when it came to uh, Nickel. So Chris Nickel, he just was running for county commissioner. He put out an affidavit, but he forgot to cross his T, and then Gratisar was like, well, you know, the part where we get him is, you know, he, he uh, slightly messed up in his paperwork. He's a fucking bully. He's a fucking bully. People who give a shit about slightly messing up in paperwork, but don't give a shit about the Constitution, isn't anybody you want to trust. He but he basically believes in lawyer fucking tricks and tactics and throwing your case out on the technicality because he doesn't actually want to argue the merits. He's not a fair person. He's against ranked choice voting. He doesn't want the military to vote. He's like, fuck the law. Fuck Colorado's law. I don't care if the military people vote or not. I want to do a French-style runoff. Just one runoff. Instant runoff voting is several runoffs. It's five runoffs in one moment. But he wants to do the French-style because that's what he thought of and he likes the expensive way. And he doesn't like the the president of the water board for six years or something, elected member. He serves as the general counsel for the Pueblo City County Library District and as a special county attorney for Pueblo County, Colorado. So he's personal injury, civil litigation, public and private employment and labor law. So that's Gratisar, okay? Now, Jackie Macy, I only know two things about him. I'd like to know more about his platform. Even though, the, you know, they're outsiders, I think outsiders will bring, you know, there's two people that saying we need to do something about the homeless. That means they're right about, there's three people. That means they're right about economics. Jackie Macy is right about economics. Janet Wilson is right about economics. And Russell Martinez is right about the economics. Uh, Jackie Macy also wants affordable health care for everybody. So he cares about our health and he cares about whether or not we got shelter. Jackie Mason is a good man. Compared to these old guard, I would rather vote for Jackie Mason than the next morning she stays inside the bathroom crying all night and then eventually he she emerges and Donald says well does it hurt did it hurt right he really showed her did it hurt so it, but unfortunately there was a law in the books 1984 that there was once a marital rape exemption in New York so think about that in liberal democratic New York up until 1984, you were allowed to rape your spouse. So there was no such thing as marital rape. And I remember at Xavier University, they asked that. One of the professors says, is, is that even a thing? And then one of the women was like, uh, yeah, <laughs> of course it is. So uh, Michael Cohen said, you can't rape your spouse. Michael Cohen is the same lawyer who arranged the payment between Stormy Daniels and Donald Trump. So Michael Cohen says, you can't rape your spouse. Yeah, you can, Michael Cohen. Donald Trump allegedly raped Ivana Trump. This is during their divorce proceedings. She talks it up as just a bunch of lawyer talk back then in 1990. Divorce deposition, meaning under oath, Ivana Trump had said that she had got raped by Donald in a fit of rage in 1989, the year prior. 
She said that after she gave a doctor recommendation for him to get rid of a scalp for his bald spot, this doctor scalp reduction operation was very painful, and he was mad about it, and he was pissed about it, and he started confronting her about it. And then, I guess, for some reason, he just starts yanking her hair out. So Donald Trump is just pulling Ivana's Trump hair out, just yanking all of her hair out, and then eventually, you know, he's uh, holding her hands back, tears off her clothes, and he rapes her. There's penetration. He jams his dick, his penis, inside of her for the first time in 16 months. They hadn't had sex. Of Yang Fuhrer's accusers is Kathy Heller. And then 1997, 21 years ago, she's at Mar-a-Lago at a Mother's Day brunch with her children and her husband and her husband's parents. So her husband's there, her husband's family, both her father and mother-in-law and her children are all at this Mother's Day brunch at Mar-a-Lago. Then she's introduced to Trump. He gets angry when she avoids a kiss. So was that a kiss on the cheek? What was that about? So she first avoids the kiss, and then Donald then grabs her, I guess, by the waist, and then he tries to kiss her, and then she turns her head, and then says Trump kissed her on the side of the mouth for a little too long, and then he left her. So he went to kiss her, and then she turns her face, and then he's just, his face, he's just kissing, just kind of chilling there right at her cheek for a little too long, and then he finally realized what's going up and gives up and... There's another allegation. This is Kristen Anderson in the early 1990s. So Kristen Anderson said she was at a New York club. Some people think it was the China Club because that's where he went on Mondays. And that Trump groped her beneath her skirt in a Manhattan nightclub. And she was an aspiring model at the time. It wasn't a sexual come on. It just was something he just wanted to prove that he could do. So he was nonchalant about it. There was no conversation. We didn't even really look at each other. It was very random. And she said it was just like he did it just to prove that he could do it and that nothing would happen to him. So somebody is sliding their hand up Kristen Anderson's miniskirt, touches her vagina through her underwear. That's what Donald Trump, she says Donald Trump did to her. And that it was like, you know, just, and then be quiet about it, right? Just went ahead and then shh. So automatically grabbed her. There was a guy who had arrested himself. <laughs> he didn't arrest himself. I guess he did in a way. He arrested himself by locking himself to a front-end loader at an oil and gas well site in Weld County. So this is, comes out of Greeley, Colorado. They don't mention the guy's name. They just mentioned there were seven total people who or eight people that were there seven left freely but the one person stayed there remained chained so if they remained chained then apparently they had to cut the chain right and then when they cut the chain then they put their own chains of handcuffs so that's Greeley the Tribune Weld County Sheriff the Captain Francisco Salcida 950 a.m. March 9th 2018 at 706 a.m. And that's it. So they don't say who the guy is, what it was about. I guess he hates oil. The oil and gas well site at Weld County. The front end loader, the extraction oil. This is the extraction oil and gas site near Greeley. So that's going on. Then the federal jury, check this out. Denver Post just reported that a convicted murderer who was sitting in jail, gets beat up in prison, and he won a $6 million federal jury verdict. And it's the largest verdict rendered for a prison or jail inmate in Colorado. It's the U.S. District Court said that the prison guard Mitch Mullen beat Jason Osland maliciously and sadistically with the intent of hurting him. He wins $6 million or $5 million for the medical bills and then $1 million for the punitive case. So it left him confined to a wheelchair. So I guess what he's, you know, um, I mean, it must be pretty bad if he was confined to a wheelchair. And, but it's just, what a cra I don't know. I, I got a lot of mixed feelings about it. So he murdered. Apparently Oslund had caught Mays breaking into his car during a party, chased him to the vacant lot, beat him, then returned to a party to brag about it. So Oslund had used a club in the attack and he killed 18-year-old 
maze. So I guess in a way, this doesn't sound as nearly as bad. He was uh, trying to break into his car, but he didn't deserve a beating to the point to where he died. And he used a club. So, you know, someone's robbing your vehicle, you would call the police, but if they can't get there in time, then you would want to try to hold them down. You would want to try to tie them up, but to beat them up to where they, you know, has... I mean, they was breaking into his property, right? So, but we have make your day law inside the house, not out in the vacant parking lot. Whatever. He's on life sentence. So he's going to spend life in prison. Jason Osland, 28 years old. Eighteen-year-old Matthew Mays was severely beaten in the vacant lot near Joplin and First Streets in Pueblo on September 5th of uh, a couple years ago, 2009. So this is from eight years ago. So he's been serving for eight years, and then he got into, he's 36 now, was 28 then. So, yeah, two-day trial, the jury on Wednesday awarded Osland serving a life sentence at the Sterling Correctional Facility since 2010 for a murder that happened a year earlier, $5 million in compensatory damages, and then $1 million in punitive damages. It's huge, says Mark Silverstein, legal director for the American Civil Liberties Union of Colorado, said in describing the size of the verdict. But he might not be able to collect it because of the 11th Amendment. The 11th Amendment makes the state immune for monetary damages. Immune. The state can... This one guy, Booker, Marvin Booker, he died in a Denver detention center in 2010. His family agreed to a $6 million settlement with the city of Denver in November 2014. So he filed a federal lawsuit. Unfortunately, it's the only way you can get any justice is by going to the federal courts. And then you heard about the 11th Amendment. The 11th Amendment is an anti-freedom. There's no fucking reason why we got the 11th Amendment. Why was it there? Why was it passed and we should take it, you know, away immediately. Of course you could use the federal courts to sue the state, somehow saying it's immune to the state. No, the 11th Amendment says you can't sue other states. You can sue the state that you're in. I would think that should be the way it is, and you should be allowed to sue the other states, especially if they injured you. So he's claiming his 8th Amendment right to equal protection had been violated, so he's modeling his case after the Marvin Booker's case, another federal lawsuit, because that's the only way you get any justice. Life prison sentenced to 28 years in prison, but it says he has since been paroled. So he was sentenced to 28 years in prison for reckless manslaughter, aggravated robbery in connection with the incident, but he's been paroled? Does that mean Kelly Osland is already out? I don't know. Maybe that's a different... So Matt, I want to mention this. Matt Mays, I don't know what had actually happened. He's been accused of stealing items from the car. There was a scuffle, they said, after the party. So I don't know how, you know, Matt Mays, how involved he was in this, you know, fight that eventually he's going to die from. If he's just a, a plain victim, if it's just cold blood just out of nowhere, just, you know, a beatdown for no reason, that is clearly way worse than if somebody was doing something, right? If you were stealing something, that stealing isn't violence, it's not rape, it's not murder, but it is stealing property. There's a right to property. So, I, you know, it's... goes on and on. They did a really good job. I mentioned it, KOAA, the facility which has more than $10 million in assets is accused of not providing adequate food. We have the El Pueblo Boys and Girls Club, the El Pueblo Ranch, Boys and Girls Ranch that essentially we spent millions of dollars. The county did, so that would be the county commissioners, and there's a county commissioner race right now. Now, this uh, article is titled, How Come Nobody is Being Held Accountable? Well, I think the reason is because there's not a civil society. The civil society isn't pressuring the government to do as they want to do, and the, a lot of people are actually in favor of child abuse. It's the only thing they give a shit about. They don't care about, you know, poverty or homelessness or stopping a war. They do give a shit about beating the fuck out of their kids, and a lot of them is Christian. You know, at least they pretend to be good but then they're beating the crap out of their kids. So why hasn't anybody been held accountable? The bunch of Lori winners in Pueblo. They want to hurt the homeless and hurt the kids. They don't have love and compassion. Picture. 
of Pontiac's war or Pontiac's rebellion because this war is going to lose. But 1763, right after the French and Indian War, you had the British was victorious and kicked the French out of North America for good. So the French were kicked out, the British were going to remain, but as soon as the British remained, automatically there was this spontaneous wildcat strike, the spontaneous wildcat revolution, or attempted revolution, attempted war. And it didn't go anywhere, but they attacked and took over Fort St. Joseph, Fort Miami, Fort Uotanon, Fort Sandusky, Fort Michilakamackinac, Fort Presque Isle, Fort Labouf, and Fort Venango. Venango. So they were able to take over, you know, eight forts. They couldn't take over Fort Niagara, Fort Detroit, Fort Legionnaire, Fort Bedford, Fort